everybody. My name is Jay Sisko. We're here in Miss Head's first period art class, and I'm here with Tatiana, Ray, and an anonymous voice. And we're here reviewing Ray's art today. So looking at it, it is a traditional art drawing, and I just want to ask, what sort of mind process were you thinking of going into this piece? I honestly have no real idea. Um, I was told to draw something I wanted. I wanted to be on the show. I thought it would be cool. So I was told to draw something, and I started, I started drawing. I've got another piece very, very similar to this in my sketchbook, and I was told to draw something. I didn't know what to draw, so I just recreated it a bit different. I don't have the kind of forethought to think of what it's going to look like when I'm done with it. So I just kind of, I start it, and I go from there. Yeah, I saw the finished product and it just looks really nice having all the faces merged together and like the abstract like mindset of the piece just looks really, um, mm -hmm. really good combined together. Like kudos to you. That's it's really head. nice. Hello. Are there any other mediums you would use in art besides like charcoal or pencil? I do digital sometimes, not as often. Papers, you know, you can carry paper around more than a tablet and pen. At my dad's, I have a PC, and I have a Huion tablet that I can plug in, and, you know, it's got a screen and all that, and I can draw on the screen. But I honestly prefer traditional now. I really, really like digital, and I'd like to get better at digital because I don't have a lot of practice with coloring and things like that. But traditional is honestly just easier, and I'm a little more comfortable with it now because I've been doing it for five, five years, I think. I use pencil... Um, obviously for sketching. And then I went in with charcoal. Charcoal. Um, with a paintbrush that I have in my bag. Do you use like your hand and the paintbrush? Or do you just use a brush? I'm just starting out with charcoal. I'm actually not sure how to use charcoal. <laughs> I'm just kind of experimenting with it. Kind of, I tear off a piece of paper. I rub charcoal on it. Like I scratch it with charcoal. And then I go in with the paintbrush like kind of smudge the charcoal and then I and then I go in with the brush on darker darker areas of the sketch that I think should be shaded um, because with pencil you can only get so dark with it uh, before it just kind of glares honestly you can just get you can just get a little bit with pencil before you can go so dark that it just gets a really bad glare. But the charcoal honestly gives off a more darker tone without having that really, really, yeah. really bad glare yeah. to it. So yeah. you're just using the charcoal as like a like a paint almost? Yeah, almost. Um, and I mean, I kind of use it the same. I'm not experienced with painting, but I'm, you know, it's kind of the dip it in, put it on the paper, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's That's, you know how I'm using charcoal. I'm not sure how an expert would use it, but I'm just kind of yeah, going Yeah, I off see right here you're doing some of the... Yeah, there's yeah. charcoal. So before you did that, you did a little bit of like uh, cross hatching and some hatching there. Yes, hatching. I love cross hatching and hatching shading. It's honestly um, my favorite. I What I do with cross hatching and hatching shading is I go in with parts that I know should be shaded and I make them darker and I put more lines closer together to make it look dark. And then I go in with areas that aren't shaded as much like I'm doing here with charcoal. First I do hatching and cross hatching shading and then I go in with charcoal to make it darker where it should be darker. But with hatching and cross hatching, I just kind of shade all around the art and get kind of a basis of where the lighting is coming from and where the shading should be. Sorry, I have to get close to papers because I'm uh, visually impaired. <laughs> but anyway, just started using charcoal. It looks really nice. Um, it gives a really nice detail. And I like how many faces are there. It kind of looks like an emotional piece. And then the hatching and the cross hatching obviously add nice little bit of shading. And for some of us who don't know what cross hatching is, it's a form of shading where you make little lines and get darker or lighter as you go on and you just keep going vertically and diagonally through the lines. And it's a nice way of knowing how to shade and where to shade. Basically think of a um, art in a Dr. Seuss book, how he yeah. shades. It's yeah. lots of little lines and they overlap with each other and make shading. Just a big Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is definitely not from a Dr. Seuss book. 
<laughs> uh, each their own, you know. So seeing kind of the little bit of the finished product here, I'm just kind of like in awe because I've never seen anybody draw a morphed face like this. It's very interesting to look at yeah. and it just makes me want to go draw it. Like I have the urge to just do that right now. Like <laughs> it's, it's honestly really cool. I really love eyes and artwork and how they're so much lighter than the shadows that are around them oh, yeah, and I make them it. stand out. I, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. I like eyes that kind of blend in with the rest of the face. Mm -hmm. that, um, if you add little specks of light, it brings them out. It, it's all about contrast. Yeah. Just the finished product looks amazing. It's very realistic and I am in love. And I would absolutely love to see more. I think that is our time today. I thank you, Tatiana, Ray, and the Anonymous Voice for joining us today. <laughs> this is Jay Sisko, and I will see you later.